Hi everyone, uh, today's presentation will be on Sigmund Freud or the father of psychoanalysis. Sigmund Freud was an Austrian neurologist born in Pribor, Czechia of the Austrian Empire or modern day Czech Republic to parents of Jewish descent. He was the first of eight children. When he was four years old, his family moved to Vienna where he grew up. Graduating high school with top honors, Freud enrolled in U the University of Vienna at the young age of 17. He initially wanted to study law, but was more intrigued by their medical studies and decided to pursue a career as a physician. He was particularly interested in the psychiatric rotations he had within his residency at the hospital. Freud had several major influences in his studies such as philosophy, which introduced the concept of the unconscious mind, as well as positivism, which theorizes logical information can be derived from sensory experiences. Freud also spent time studying zoology, which has major roots in Darwinism. Furthermore, he was an avid smoker, which becomes more important later on in his life. After graduating medical school in 1881 at the age of 25, Freud started practicing medicine at Vienna General Hospital. There, he concentrated on the effects of drugs on the body and aphasia. He especially liked working in the clinical psychiatric unit. An impressive young physician, Freud earned a fellowship in France in 1885 with Jean Martin Charcot who was a renowned neurologist at the time who specialized in hypnosis research. It was there Freud learned clinical techniques of hypnosis. This impacted Freud so much that in 1886, he resigned his position at the hospital to practice privately in mental disorders where he would use hypnosis for treatment. His findings were mostly inconsistent pushing him to explore other theories of the unconscious, such as dreams and childhood development. In 1900, Freud published his first work entitled The Interpretation of Dreams, which introduces his theory of the unconscious with respect to dream interpretation and discusses what would later become the theory of the Oedipus complex. Freud went on to publish extensively on his theories writing over 10 books and essays on his research up until his death in 1939. The reading we had today was published in 1910, which was about halfway through his career. Freud wanted to become a university professor to continue his research at his alma mater, the University of Vienna, and became a lecturer in 1902. That same year, a number of Viennese physicians interested in Freud's work were invited to meet at his apartment every Wednesday afternoon to discuss issues relating to psychology and neuropathology. This group was called the Wednesday Psychological Society and it marked the beginnings of the worldwide psychoanalytic movement. This popularized Freud's work and helped establish his ideas across the world. Among notable members include, included Carl Jung, Alfred Adler, Wilhelm Steckel, Rudolf Reitler, and Max Kahane. The first woman member, Margaret Hilferding, joined in 1910. Freud continued to teach and publish until 1922, when he was no longer able to speak due to several throat operations due to cancer from his extensive smoking. Although he could not lecture, he continued to publish. During this time, the rise of the Nazi era encroached and in 1933, Nazis took control of Germany in 1933. Freud and his books were among many destroyed in book burning because he was also of Jewish descent. His family Fred fled to Austria, but his departure was continually delayed. He was also arrested by the Gestapo and his family was subject to persecution. Freud's consistent smoking eventually proved fatal as his cancer in the mouth was deemed inoperable and died in 1939, 
22 days after the start of World War II. As stated previously, the idea of the unconscious has been a consistent area of interest for Freud since he was in medical school. Inconsistent results with hypnosis with his own patients led Freud to explore other methods of the unconscious. This gave rise to dream analysis and free association, where the patient is encouraged to talk freely without inhibition or interruption from others. In describing their dreams with no distractions, Freud hoped to effectively analyze the unconscious topics that patients would not be able to articulate on their own. Freud also divided the psyche of an individual by modeling the instinctual parts into three separate categories. The id, or primal instincts, the superego, morality, and the ego, which is the reality that mediates the two. The symbolic representation of this model is popular in cinema, such as The Emperor's New Groove, which shows Kronk, his id, represented as the devil, and his superego, represented as the angel, and Kronk himself, represented as his ego, who mediates the two in his decision-making process. During the free association technique, Freud and his researchers looked for slips, or parapraxis, which are errors in speech, memory, or physical action due to some sort of interference from the unconscious. This is referred to as the Freudian slip. According to Freud's seduction theory, the patients that came to him for treatment suffering from sexual molestation in early childhood that maintain in the unconscious or infantile sexual abuse that manifests in their mental health problems later in life. This theory also ties into the Oedipus complex, which is a child's feelings of desire for his or her opposite sex parent and jealousy and or anger towards his same sex parent. As well as the castration complex ties into this which is the unconscious anxiety arising during psychosexual development represented in males as the fear that their penis will be removed by the father in response to their sexual interests in their own mother. So we have a few reading questions. So the first, the reading explained in the depth about the process of dream analysis. Do you think this is a credible and effective source of information of a patient struggling with mental health issues? Question two. Of the various concepts and theories pioneered by Freud, which is the most intriguing to you and why? Three. Freud believed all individuals have a repressed complex to some degree. Do you believe that is true or not? What factors can influence this complex? I wanted to take the time to thank you all so much for your time. I hope you all have been well, safe, and healthy, and I wish you the best of luck with everything um, in the future. Thanks.